Hey traders, a warm welcome to, all right, so indicators can be confusing, right? You have them on your chart, you've got massive hundreds, if not thousands of indicators, you don't know what they do, how to use them, some people are saying this, some people are saying that, you're like, I don't know what to do with them. Well, there's a very simple way to use them that means you don't get bogged down and get confused by all the different signals that helps align you with better trades, and that is to use them as a filter. So rather than using them as a signal to get in, which everyone seems to be saying, hey, you buy when this does this, this moving average crosses this, this touches that, you forget about that for now, and you say, right, I'm going to use them as a filter. In other words, these conditions must be met before I make my trade. Now, this will put you in good stead all the way up to advanced techniques. It's a really, really good way. So if you start doing it early with very basic filtering, then it will really help you and assist you when you start increasing your trading size and you start to get some traction with your trading. Now, we're not gonna talk about the trigger so much now. In other words, when you place the trade, this is all about defining and refining when you're actually looking to place the trade. Worry about that bit separately. But for now, we're talking about how we can reduce, potentially reduce your losing trades and a very simple way of using some of the most common indicators out there to do that. Okay, so, Here's the setup. We're on a daily chart, and this works for your currency pairs like your Euro USD, your GBP USD, USD JPY, your golds, your silvers, your DAOs, your footsies, anything like that. It's not as useful in stocks and shares. It can still be used with some tweaks and adjustments, but better on the broader, more liquid instruments. Okay, so, and also guys, you could probably get away with using it in some of the thicker cryptos as well. So have a play around with it if crypto is your thing. Anyway, what's the setup? How do we use it? So we've got an EMA, which is an exponential moving average, pretty similar to a simple moving average, except that it's slightly weighted towards current price. In other words, more price gets a bit more weighting in the calculation as opposed to a simple. But if you haven't got exponential, which most chart packages have, it doesn't matter. It's not gonna make a huge amount of difference. I just prefer it very slightly because it weights price a little bit more towards the right-hand side of the chart. And we're gonna have a 75 setting on that. So we've got 75 periods. I'm using a daily chart, guys, so 75 days we're looking at on here. You might think that's quite quite long, and it is, but it will become clear in a second. Generally speaking, guys, the higher the number, the less kind of oscillations the moving average has gets smoothed out over a, a more price. So a short number like five will be very, very jagged and will follow price. A longer period, 200 period, will be very slow to move because it's taking a long time to move because it's based on 200 days if you're looking at a daily chart. Okay, so that's the first thing. Next one is a stochastic. Every charting platform has this. Stochastic and the settings you want on this are probably the default in your trying package, 14, three, and three. Check them out, very easy to change if they're not. And again, close enough is fine. People say you always gotta be exactly this, and exactly that, won't make much of a difference, especially when you're changing this number. If that's 76, the 75 is not gonna make any difference. But anyway, those are the settings you wanna use. Okay, so how do we use it? So what we're looking to do is we're looking to align ourselves with a trend. And if we're aligning ourselves with a trend, we want to only buy a trend on a pullback. So generally speaking, that is a better way of getting into a trend. Not always, and I'm generalizing a bit here, but generally speaking, if we've got a nice steady uptrend, we're looking to buy on a rotation down on a pullback for a continuation to the high side. That is a kind of fundamental basic strategy. It's been around for years, used by retail traders, used by professional hedge fund managers, used by everybody. It's like this. And this is the way, this is the way the tide is going. I don't want to chase it. I want to wait until there's a little bit of a retracement and then I want to buy for continuation. Works for both uptrends and downtrends. So let's try to work out a way of getting on that. So very simply what we do is this. We plot our 75 period EMA. We put our stochastics down here. Generally speaking, you have them at the bottom of your chart for ease of comparison. And here's price here in black. So purple is our moving average. Our price is in black and stochastics is in orange here in this chart. The rules are this. When price is above the 75 period EMA, that's a first filter tick. So price is above, we have one tick. Now, if stochastics are below 30, we, we'll cut to those in a second, if they're below 30, so they kind of oscillate, stochastics oscillate around a zero number here, 
and then normally go 30s around this level and you'd have something like 70 up here. If they're below 30, that generally indicates a potentially an oversold condition. That's what they call it, don't worry about that for now. What we're looking to do is, if price is above the 75 period moving average, 75 day moving average, and stochastics are oversold, then we're allowing ourselves to buy. So we're only ever going to buy if we're in an uptrend or only ever going to look for long bets if we're spread betting. By the way, if you guys haven't got a spread betting broker, check out the one in the description below. We're only going to go long, we're going to take buy bets. If we're in a downtrend, only go short or take sell bets. Okay, so this is giving us a tick here because we're above the moving average and now we're oversold condition. So generally get oversold as price comes down off highs, but we don't want it to come too far that it starts to break through here. So let's look at this as an example, right? So when price is above the SMA, so we've got basically all this here is above it and this bit here and then all this here is above it. So while price is in there, we've got the first filter ticked and now the second filter is when we're in the oversold condition with our stochastic and here we've got our oversold condition here here we've got a little bit of oversold and here we've got a little bit of oversold so we look and see if both filters are matched here we go up and we go yes they are so that would be a buying area here uh, we have a look here and we go okay what else have we got we've got an oversold condition here but we're below the 75 period moving average, exponential moving average. So here wouldn't be a buy because not both of the filters are correct, are true. We'd have to be above the 75 and below the 30 on the stochastics. Can't just have one. So even though this goes into oversold territory, the fact that it's under the 75 EMA means we don't take it because it's potentially could be a reversal. Yes, in hindsight, this particular chart looks like it could have been a good one, but you're trying to align yourself and give yourself some framework and structure and rules. And very often, if price is trading below a moving average and it's oversold, it could be rolling over a little bit deeper, so you don't wanna be buying. Okay, we go again and we say, right, we're above it, we're above it, we haven't got any oversold conditions yet, haven't got any oversold conditions yet, no oversold conditions. Oh, here we go, here's an oversold condition, we're under 30, look up, and price is above our 75, so there would be our next buy. So really what we're doing is stopping ourselves from over trading, aligning ourselves with the trend, and waiting for specific conditions to be met. Now, this is a good starting point. You can play around with this. How can you play around with this? This is where we come to our 20 and 80. If you want to be more strict with your criteria and take fewer trades, you can expand these out a bit. And if that went up to 80, then that would mean this line would be a little bit higher. If it went down to 20, it would be a little bit lower. So you get less oversold readings and less overbought readings, so left or less uh, filter tick checkboxes, if you like. So you could do that. You could also expand the moving average, so you can make it a higher number which would mean that, hey, you get more signals because price will stay above the higher number longer than a lower number. So you could do that. If you wanted to trade less signals and tighten up the restrictions, again, you could bring that down maybe to a 50 period if something's very, very active. You can adjust it for the market and the conditions that are currently trading at, say, at the moment in time. So if you're trading kind of a commodity that's going crazy, maybe you want to be a little bit more strict and kind of tighten this up and go, well, you know, maybe I'll use a 50 period EMA, maybe I'll use 20 and 80. But the point is guys a very simple way of aligning yourself with the trend a very simple way of stopping yourself from over trading and a simple way of at least being somewhat on the right side of what you're trying to achieve you're trying to buy pullbacks that gets you somewhat on the right side like i say play around with it have a few tweaks and adjust it and see how you get on and let me know in the comments section below take care keep your risk managed whatever you're doing that's the most important thing bye bye